As 2020 came to a close, it was revealed that our infrastructure is incredibly susceptible to cyber attacks. While we sit captivated by the devastation of COVID-19, the scale of the BLM movement, and even the breach of the Capitol building, there is one facet of our lives that has escaped wall-to-wall -wall news coverage, the SolarWinds hack. COVID-19 forced businesses to have their employees work from home. This drove millions of people to bring their work computers to unsecure networks with little protection of the data that they contain. The following onslaught of ransomware and malware attacks proved without a doubt we are not prepared to handle the perceived cybersecurity threat. However, the SolarWinds attack showed that it may be worse than we thought. SolarWinds is a Texas-based IT company founded in 1999 by a former executive at Walmart, David Yunts. Instead of building renewable energy like their namesake would infer, SolarWinds actually designs software to help businesses manage their network and systems infrastructure. They serve more than 300,000 clients, which include Fortune 500 businesses and a number of government agencies. On December 8, 2020, FireEye, a cybersecurity firm that handles detection and prevention of large-scale cyber attacks, was compromised by the SVR, Russia's elite foreign intelligence service. They believe that specific red team tools were stolen that would later help the attackers deploy the SolarWinds attack. FireEye contacted the NSA to inform them of the breach. The NSA did not appear to be informed about the attack and even utilized the SolarWinds software themselves. If the largest cybersecurity firms aren't safe from being compromised by cyber attacks, who is? The attack was first reported on the 13th of December, 2020, by the Washington Post. Around 33,000 of SolarWinds customers utilized the Orion platform that was targeted. Nearly 18,000 customers were affected, more than 50% of their user base. The hackers utilized a supply chain attack. A supply chain attack takes advantage of the weakest link of the supply chain and typically utilizes a rootkit or other hardware-based spying components to obtain information. It is suspected that they may have gained access via their Microsoft Office 365 account. Further, it is estimated that the hackers had access to SolarWinds software publishing infrastructure no later than September of 2019. From December 2019 to February 2020, the hackers secured their position on the network by establishing a command and control infrastructure. This is commonly referred to as a botnet. In March 2020, the hackers began to plant rats or remote access Trojans into their system. This malware had an extremely far reach, compromising key US targets such as the executive branch, the military, and even Homeland Security. Once the hackers were able to compromise these networks and gain control, they took advantage of exploitation tools such as Cobalt Strike, which provides the user with a number of attack packages. A fatal flaw of Orion is that it was connected to the user's Office 365 email accounts, giving the hackers access to all of their data. With the credentials they obtained here, they were able to pose as legitimate users gaining access to Microsoft's Azure Active Directory. Since the malware involved was new, the hackers were able to execute their attack undetected by Einstein, an intrusion detection system employed by the Department of Homeland Security, who was also compromised. The hackers were able to best every big cybersecurity player in the game, along with a number of government agencies. So who were they? This attack was performed by an APT, which stands for an Advanced Persistent Threat. This is colloquially known as a nation state or foreign government. APT-29, also known as Cozy Bear, or the Russian Foreign Intelligence Service, SVR, was reported to be behind the SolarWinds attack. 
This is not an unusual situation, as it is believed that the SVR has been involved in a number of large-scale attacks in the past few years. It is thought that the hackers had control of the network for nine entire months, able to go in and out of the network as they pleased. FireEye was breached first, then SolarWinds, and suddenly the hack grew bigger. Veterans of the industry watched in awe as each company after company fell, like dominoes, one after another. The hack continued to grow. Then government agencies fell victim, including the Treasury Department, the Commerce Department, the Justice Department, State Department, Homeland Security, and more. The big players joined the fray, Microsoft, Cisco, and Intel. Now why did this happen? Part of this was due to a lack of government personnel who oversaw cybersecurity. Donald Trump had gutted the U.S. defense against cyber attacks by disbanding the cybersecurity coordinator position, firing the director of CISA, while a number of other appointed positions lay vacant. Further, there is a lack of unified response against this threat. Individual private companies work alone to fight off attacks, and each big government agency that is involved often keeps their resources to themselves. Only one question remains. Are we under Attacks are often tangible. 9-11, for example, is an event that will forever be in our hearts and minds. This attack was silent. Most Americans went to sleep the night of the SolarWinds attack without any knowledge that they were being targeted. A silent enemy. An attack that can wreak havoc, but remain undetected. Although this is being categorized as cyber espionage by many, some are calling it cyber warfare. Regardless of definition, this shows the true scale of what cyber attacks are capable of. Our next step needs to be a unified effort in preparing for something.